Hey, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh, and this is Josh. Hi. And we're very excited to announce that Flight Test has put out an album. <laughs> That's not a CD, brother. It is not? No. Oh. It is a new Flight Test Electra. I thought that these holes were like dramatic pauses in the song. <laughs> dramatic pauses. It's like a pause, and then the beat drops. <laughs> but that doesn't happen? No, it doesn't. Okay. I thought maybe we were getting into some dubstep, chill step. What's dubstep? Never mind. Uh, this is actually Electro Hub, and this is really cool. Yeah, it's been a long time since we've had any new uh, Rotor Bones products come yeah. to market. Mm -hmm. um, and it's because we've been putting a lot of energy into it. And uh, we have Chad Capper to thank for this contribution. Yeah. He started this back in uh, December. Of 1918. And it's finally ready. It's been tested, it's been proven. It's kind of like the uh, Anycopter because yeah. you can make any kind of configuration of a uh, multi rotor. The main difference between this and the wooden frames is these are a lot more durable. Yes. And also they have power distribution. What is power distribution? That's all these things are plugged in. It's all the things yeah. you can, that are plugged in. That's uh, everything. One thing is, is on a lot of multi-rotors, you have video transmitters, you have camera power, you have lights, you have your ESCs, you have power for your gimbals, you have all these different components that need to pull power. Distribution gives you a way to do all this very cleanly. And what we have is we have the bigger pads in the middle, and that powers your ESCs and gives you your main power line. Right. Um, on the outside, you have your lower amperage draw, like your lights, your video transmitters, those components that draw a lot less. Okay. But now you can get all your wires centered up, you can you can solder them down in there, and it's all nice and clean. This is something that Chad put together, and he actually did a really cool. Uh, what do you call it? Yeah, he designed this video. strictly. He loves hexacopters, and he designed this to go on his hexacopter and, and clean it up a little bit. And yeah, he did do a demo really. Want to yeah. show it? Sure. This is it. Look at that. You know, Chad's amazing with yeah. uh, what's called composition. That's yes. my new word for the day, is composition. Good. He's really good at that. And, and it is also amazing. A lot of times, you know, people see gimbal controlled multi-rotors and they think thousands of dollars. Our goal is to get you into this hobby and help you to experience this stuff as economically and also as, as easy to repair as possible. Yeah. We want to be able to use common materials, but also make it durable and versatile too. Right. So uh, Chad's Electra Hub is definitely a great start. But also the community has been a great contributor to this as well too. Yeah, so we have this available as a kit. Yeah. Uh, where you can actually get the motor mounts and also the uh, landing gear, right? Yep, and the motor mounts and the landing gear, we really took a lot of uh, feedback from the community. One thing we don't want you to do is spend your hard-earned money and have a crash and have to repair it easily. Yeah. We want a common item to break, and that common item is simply the wood booms. You can go to almost any hardware store and get booms to work. But also those booms are dimensioned in a way you can use carbon fiber or aluminum. So as you want to upgrade, you can always bling it out like uh, the tricopter over here here actually has aluminum booms and nice. the wires are ran inside of it. But the whole goal of this is uh, the community was saying, you know what, we don't like, we like the look of it, we like the feel of it, we don't like when we crash that we have to buy replacement parts. Right. And we don't want you guys to either. We want you to be able to fix it quickly and get back up in the air because that's the best way to enjoy the hobby. Yeah, and also these little feet here are yeah. attached with zip ties, so and, the zip ties are going to break. And this has actually been in the store for a long time, but we're using a lot more now. This is our simple down on landing gear. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it takes a ton of beatings. Be careful. No, no, don't worry about that. If you're going to hit it really hard, it's actually going to break the zip ties. You're not going to break that down on landing gear. Don't do it yet. Maybe later. But on top of that, um, the motor mounts. The motor is extended beyond the booms, which is really great for uh, lower uh, mounting your, your props lower to the boom. But that does cause a problem if you have a tip strike where you come in on one of the booms, yeah. you're going to break your motor mount and you're also going to subject that motor to a lot of stress. If you use too big of a motor above a 370 size, 
you can have the excess weight can cause it to vibrate. We don't want that. No. So the solution to that is we have uh, two G10 discs that are, are incredibly durable. Yeah. And the screw goes directly into the bottom of the motor, which makes it simple. And if God forbid you do break your boom, you just simply loosen these a half a turn, slide it off, slide it on a new boom, and you're done. Okay. And uh, that way, also, if you get a tip strike, you're not going to be putting your motor out at the first point of impact. It's moving it in, so the boom's going to take that hit. Okay. And awesome. now you can go with much more bigger, common size motors than the uh, Blue Wonders or the 370 size motors. Sweet. Um, a matter of fact, this kind of motor, which is basically a 425 size, 900 kV, is very, very popular for both three cell and four cell applications. So we wanted to make sure that we designed around that. Cool. Now, you and Alex and Peter got together to do a Let's Fly with these yeah, guys. But it, it, it wasn't wasn't real successful. No, was it wasn't very successful. We were plagued with some very fun, unique problems, but also it was a great way to stress test them too. Um, Alex was actually flying our prototype tricopter. And if you guys are wondering, um, we wanted to build a more robust tilt as well too. Mm -hmm. So this is our prototype tilt that we've been testing. And the neat thing tough is tilt. it's a tough tilt. And we've gotten to really put it through its paces. Yeah. Once again, moving it inside the boom, uh, making it more robust so you can put a bigger motor on it, and also making it direct drive so you don't have the uh, the clevises. Once again, your input is so valuable to us. Uh, we took that seriously and we wanted to apply that. So the tough tilt's gonna be coming out in the near future. Nice. Um, that's in development, we'll have it molded. It looks big, it's gonna be lightweight, very, very durable, and very, uh, very reliable. But uh, Alex flew into a tree. It is windy. I went down. And he broke off a landing gear. And he broke but off he did a not break gear. the landing gear. He didn't even break a boom. The landing gear popped off. He picked it up. Always make sure if you ever wreck anything, whether it's a plain multi-rotor, don't just grab the biggest part and walk away. Always look for the pieces around it. But yeah, the landing gear popped off just as it should. Nice. And uh, that's why even the zip ties, we, we put lighter gauge zip ties. So if something's going to give, it's going to be that landing gear. Right. And uh, it worked out wonderfully. So Good. We flew that. Alex was actually chasing me. And the funny thing about that was uh, I was flying the very first version of the Spider Quad with an APM 2.6. Yeah. And this goes to uh, redundancy is your friend. Um, I fly off the GoPro and since then we've learned that board cameras are a much better way to go. Yeah. Uh, but I was flying off the GoPro, sure enough it shut down on me. Yeesh. So I lost my video link. But when I lost my video link, the nice thing is with that APM 2.6, I just flipped it in the loiter mode. And it just stayed right there? And it just locked right there. I was around a couple trees, my video, my GoPro shut down on me, it went completely black. I flipped it in the loiter mode, and then I went hunting for it. Nice. And Alex, ironically, was actually hunting for it for me and following me, and sure enough, we found it, and it was quite windy. It was sitting there right in the middle of the opening, right when I flipped hmm. loiter on, however happy as can be. Now this is a really what good, a good point. boy. It was good. It was a, a well behaved and very very stable. And also the neat thing, APM 2.6 has a configuration for the Spider Quad, or they also they, they know it as Dead Cat. Um, the same frame style as Discovery. It was so simple to set up, and I'm so happy we had it. Mm -hmm. um, but we went ahead and put it in loiter. We found it, and life was good with that. In the meantime, though. We this gave, we gave Peter is six, something that Peter made. Yeah, we gave him no restrictions. <laughs> we said, Peter, here's six motors, and we figured he was going to come back with a hex. And right. Here, here's six motors, here's some booms, here's an electro hub. He comes back with a T. He came back with this. I think he called it the crane or something because he showed us a picture, and it was actually lifting a 250-size quad like a crane. Really? And it was amazing, <laughs> but there were some more benefits to it. And a matter of fact, we're going to be working more with Peter in the near future. So uh, if you want to see some stuff like this. Yeah, that body's pretty darn cool for orientation. And it also covers the electro hub beautifully. Uh, even looks good. Look at this. You can even put it on that guy. It's a nice little hat. Nice little hat. Nice way to dress up your multi rotor. Uh, but what we noticed really quickly was one disadvantage with hexes is when you put the gimbals on the center mount, you always see those booms. See the arms in the shot. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, we weren't planning it as a happy accident, but we noticed with Peter's configuration that you could actually put a gimbal on here and fly gimbal flight and still pivot forward. No booms. No booms. And another cool uh, byproduct of this is you have, once again, more redundancy. Uh, he was flying, he hit a tree branch and broke off one of his uh, props. He was unaware of that. He was a dead cat in the water. He wasn't a dead cat, it kept flying. Oh. Because the neat thing is this had to work a little bit harder. He lost a little bit of his yaw control, but he still was able to maintain control. And guys, this kind of goes away from the, the whole things with the Electro Hub. Uh, redundancies on models is wonderful. Um, if you have a system that has your autopilot and you lose your video link, you can put it in the loiter mode like I did. But if you have a radio link loss, you can dial in a fail safe, which once again puts it in the loiter or return to home. Right. If you have a GoPro or a camera go bad, you have all alternate options now to be safer. And that actually makes the safety of these multi-rotors and a lot of these um, unmanned platforms much better. So uh, just want to point that out. Redundancy yeah. is good on anything to protect your investment. So when you order the kit, this is all the stuff that you get. Yep, that's it's the quad kit. Basically a blank canvas. Got lots of different configuration options. You can, of course, go back to the original quad configuration, X or Plus, uh, but the Dead Cat or the Spider Quad configuration is very, very popular nowadays because it moves the booms out of the way and you can put your uh, 
your camera in there much easier. Now we're gonna have eventually a tricopter kit coming out once we're done prototyping the uh, the tilt and getting that manufactured. So that's gonna be coming in the near future. Uh, but for right now we have the quad kit. But once again, you can configure it to your hex. You can configure it to a T. Uh, the sky is the limit, uh, and it also accepts all of our previous rotor bones components. So of course the camera plate will come on. Nice. And a matter of fact, um, when I was building this, I built another one because um, Paul Baxter from Ready to Fly Quads is working directly with us to pre-flash boards oh, nice. work right on this with no no flashing no dialing no adjustments it yeah. just works good flashing is bad so Get arrested for that yeah that is bad so he, he set us up with uh with his board now this is the amazing thing we always want to be economical or cheap right yeah this frugal board, frugal that's it this board is pre-flashed works amazing it's about 16 bucks and what Paul's going to do is he's going to get a board, motor, speed controls, everything you need except the battery to be able to have a great flying experience. So nice. just plug and play. You don't have any more guesswork, any more tweaking or dialing in. And we're going to be able to show you in a build video coming up. We're going to show you how to build the Spider Quad. But I built this to test it out and I brought the Switzerland with us. Yeah. And we got the opportunity to fly it up in the Alps. We got the opportunity to do a lap we call the Lavender Let's Fly. Nice. Uh, you'll be seeing that episode in the near future where we use this. It flies amazing. Cool. And it's such a blast. Once again, you'll see the props. And uh, using the uh, the camera mount on the bottom is definitely the way to go with moving your camera out away from the uh, hub, yeah. but also giving you a spot for your battery, which is really, really convenient. One of the neat things too with the power distribution, I fly this off of four cells and it flies equally well, just a little bit less powered on uh, three cells, but we use bigger props. Uh, but I was able to take the 600 milliwatt from uh, Immersion RC and actually tap it directly in because it works between two and six cells. Okay. So that's really exceptional that you can have a video transmitter work in that range. Yeah. And you got to be careful if you're not using immersion, always check your specs to make sure that you're operating in the proper voltage. Okay. Okay. But yeah, we got to fly this up in the Alps. We got to fly it uh, in the Lavender Let's Fly. Yeah. It was a blast. Even without the stabilization and all those extra components that the APM gave us, it was an amazing flight experience. Nice. All right. Well, thank you guys for watching and thank you for sponsoring Flight Test and also Thank you for all your ideas, yes. all your input, because it's because of you guys that we're able to make these, all these different things and make the modifications that you guys want to see. I can't express how grateful we are for your input and your feedback. Um, you guys have definitely made this product much better. We love flying it and we hope you do too. And also, um, we want to give you an incentive too. The first 200 people that go to the store get the Electro Hubs, uh, they can also add the camera plate at a reduced cost. Oh, cool. So we want to make this as economical and actually the camera plate and the Electro Hub together will be cheaper than the original Anycopter nice. by itself. All right, we'll go check it out in the store and we're gonna have a build video coming up for the uh, yeah. spider it's gonna be complete action not just building the frame but all the way from the frame to the electronics to flying just like we do with our airplane videos even if you're not building the electro hub this is gonna hopefully help you a lot with how to get a quadcopter in the air nice all right we're well, looking forward to that we'll see you guys next see you next time